interesting because most of the jihadists don't seem to be right-wing extremists. They're, they're Muslims. A spokesmouth for the most questionable Muslim American ad advocacy group said at a pro-refugee rally Sunday in St. Louis that Americans should fear their own right-wing extremists more than the 10,000 Syrians Obama wants to resettle in the United States. You see, CARR wants to bring as many Muslims in as possible so they can make Sharia law the norm and then persecute Christians, in my opinion, the way it's being done in the homeland. And yet, the double-talking front mouth for them, for CARE, said that right-wing extremism is far more dangerous than the one in a million chance that a jihadist could slip in among the 10,000 uh, refugees who are coming from the jihadist hotbed of Syria. That is such astounding nonsense that the FBI would not investigate CARE. It's amazing to me that Obama's gotten this far with his slow but sure takeover of the country and the flooding of America with very, very dangerous refugees. This kind of racism has to be exposed and stopped. Obama's covert racism is a threat to the survival of this country. There's a pastor, by the way, who finally went off on this, and we're gonna play a piece from him. He cannot take it anymore. What state is he from, uh, Robert? Tennessee, he cannot believe what they're doing to the children in Tennessee and the brainwashing about Islam and the downgrading of Christianity. This is how far the Muslim jihadist lobby has gotten in this country. Listen. Look, somebody needs to stand up and say this. I'm outside of one of our local schools here in Wilson County in Mount Juliet, Tennessee, and we have a number of our families and our church that are really upset and up in arms over all of this new Islamic indoctrination in our public school system. I know somebody says, why can't you just leave well enough alone? It's not that big a deal. They'd have to throw the history books out if they change it. Let me tell you something. When they're in sixth grade, they get a half a page of watered-down Christianity. Yeah, and what? Where's the rest of it? And what, 32 pages on the wonders of Islam? Cut off by my uh, sound department. The most important part, clipped off by the sound department. Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. So we have um, the Pope coming to meddle in politics, which is an affront to me as an American. I don't like uh, a, a mixing of, let's say, uh, religion and politics at all. It makes me sick. And while in the past the left would have just screamed like braying mules, had a pope lectured them about homosexual behavior or about abortion, suddenly they're cheering this pope because, as I said to you before, uh, he's, a, he's one of them in terms of uh, communism, so socialism, Marxism. And what's interesting to me is here's a city like San Francisco filled with the biggest phonies on the planet. They go to the opera opening carrying clutches worth more than what a family could live on in Syria for a year. They talk the talk, and there was not one person there of that I saw of, uh, let us say, opposite means at this opening. All well, they talk about it. Or well, you go to L.A., to Beverly Hills, to fundraisers. Filled with all the Hollywood libs in the biggest houses you could ever imagine. All friends of, of uh, Bill Clinton, friends of uh, Barack Obama, they throw fundraisers for them in 50,000 square foot houses. And of course, they're all for the poor, but they usually pay very little income tax. They have their companies set up where they're paying almost no tax double and triple Irish setups. You know, you can't believe it. It's like Microsoft. It's like Google. If they ever paid their fair share of taxes, you wouldn't have to worry about the poor anymore in this country. Not at all. Oh, no, yeah, if, uh, old Zuckerberg. Old, old Zuckerberg. Mr. Undershirt. Actually paid what Facebook earns. Straight out federal, corporate. To take care of a lot of the poor. But they don't. You do. That's all. I wish we could take care of all of our own crippled children in this country. All of the poor crippled children. I cried over them this morning. I was making a prayer to God and I opened myself up. Instead of being the normal closed human that I am. I opened myself up to God and I said, God, what is it you want me to do that I'm not doing? And a voice came back and said, open yourself up to the suffering of the children. Help the children. Help the poor crippled children. Remember your brother. Do it for him. And truly, I started to shudder. And a flood of, it came over me. It was so strong. The image 
of the tens of thousands of American children of all races suffering in wheelchairs and in beds and in back wards with unnamed diseases, both born to them or through accidents. God only knows the suffering, and here we are taking in the world's refuse, the world's refuse and the world's poor, as though we have none of our own. And then we have this fraud, Bernie Sanders, a laughable fraud that could only appear in a country like ours. The man is a clownish representation of what you would have presented as a crackpot lefty, lefty professor. Now suddenly he takes himself seriously. And listen to this jerk, Bernie Sanders in clip five. Listen to this now. And the Pope also writes, quote. The Pope? There is a need for financial Wait, reform. Let's stop. Here is an atheist along. Jew. Stop, stop. He is an atheist Jew, Bernie Sanders. They say he's a non-observant non Jew, whatever that means. That sounds like it's something noble. What do you mean, I'm non-observant Jew? Then you're not a Jew. What do you mean, non-observant? What are you then? You're nothing. You don't believe in anything, but he's embracing the Pope. Don't you understand what's going on here? The communists love this Pope. That's why Bernie Sanders would have spit on the Pope in the past, mocked him behind closed doors, made a mockery of him with fake hats with his friends up there in Vermont, mocked him. Now suddenly he's embracing the Pope. This Pope, this Pope. Here he comes, Larry David of politics. Let's hear it again. And the Pope also writes, quote, there is Pope. a need for financial reform along ethical lines that would produce in its turn an economic reform to oh, benefit shut everyone. Shut up, you Money little communist minuscule nobody. Shut up. No, keep playing it. I want to scream at him. Oh, he's finished? Oh, well, he just took a shot of seltzer. Now, those are back. pretty profound words, which I hope we will all think about. In the Pope's view, and I agree with him, Oh, now he's with we the Pope. We are Look living at that. in a nation and in a world. And the Bible speaks to this issue. No, now he's preaching in the Bible. A nation and in a world. Stop it. Atheist, communist Jew is suddenly leaning on the Bible. He suddenly discovered the Bible. Atheist, communist Jew, ACL to ACLU type, who has spit on everything decent in his entire life to get where he is, now suddenly he's embracing the Bible and the Pope, talking about income redistribution. As I say, you know, it's easy to say these things. But where's the money to come from, Bernie and uh, Mr. Francis? I would say that they should sell the Vatican art and also disperse some of the gold. I understand the Vatican's the largest uh, holder of gold in the world. They should sell some of it on the open market and give the money to the poor. And while they're at it, they ought to bring in about a million, let's say, no, not to the Vatican. They should start small, a thousand Syrian refugees, then I'll believe a word that he says. And while you're at it, Bernie, how many refugees have you taken into your house? How much money have you given to the poor in your life, Bernie? What a, an age we're living in. But I think Bernie is a good thing for America right now because he's surging ahead of, uh, of the corrupt one, Hillary. He's surging ahead of her, which would be great. The greatest election in American history could be communist versus capitalist. Bernie Sanders, poor pipsqueak, ugly little college teacher type against successful, good-looking Republican capitalist Donald Trump. 85-15, 90-10. No matter how many votes they can steal, how many triple votes from New York and hanging Chad, Florida, no matter how many foreigners manipulate the votes, it's 90-10, 85-15. And Bernie goes on to a very successful career at NPR. Subsidized radio where he could do this every day of the week like the other clowns who could never make it in commercial radio because nobody would listen to them. But all right, go Bernie, go. I'm going to support the Bernie campaign. I may send him 20 bucks because I want to see him beat Hillary. Then I want to really see a vote in America because I can guarantee you even the non-citizens who are living here will vote for Trump, not for this communist fool. One thing I know is that poor people will vote for Trump, not him. Poor people who are working actually want somebody who's going to help them uh, make capital and retain capital, not someone who's going to help them not make capital and then take it away from them. Plain English, I'm an immigrant son. I know what I'm talking about. So we got a lot to talk about. You want to join the conversation? The phone number is 855-400-7282. It's the Savage Nation. And just remember this, before you talk... 
and we'll take calls in a moment, you're speaking to an audience about three times larger than uh, at the largest football stadium in the country. I want you to understand that. You may think you're just talking to me, but you're not. I'm so personable, and I have such a power of, of ability to, to bond with my audience that they think they're just talking to me, that it's a party line and just making a phone call. Well, okay, that's nice to do if you want to relax, but you're not making a phone call. You're going to be listened to by more people than you've ever met in your life, that you could ever meet in your life. Any 15 minutes, three to four times larger than the largest football stadium crowd is listening to this show. So before you speak, think about that. And if you don't think you're up to it, then hang up. But we're going to go to Adam right now on line uh, three, KFAY Radio. Adam, make your point, please. Hi there. I wanted to uh, take issue with your comment about uh, the Pope being an Adam socialist. I'm a, I'm a devout Catholic conservative uh, Republican myself. And, um, you know, I think first and foremost you need to probably remember that he is a Christian. Um, and I, I know you are too, Mr. Savage. No, I, no, actually, I'm not a Christian, but it, it, it's irrelevant what I am. The Pope is espousing naked Marxism in virtually every speech. But, but you, have to, you have to look closely. For instance, if you took a look at his global warming uh, piece, the environment piece, it, the liberals often overlook many of his pieces within that document, which talk about pro-life and life beginning at conception, etc. So while he has many pieces that the liberals will attach to, they often aren't looking at the other side as well. I need you to... I, I, wait, 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 but we're not, we're not talking about the other side. That's what we'd expect from a pope, to be against abortion, wouldn't we? Well, of course. Of course. But we would not expect the pope to buy lock, stock, and barrel liberation theology of the type that's espoused by tin horn college teachers every day of the week in this country because they have no opponents. But you have to remember where he's coming from, from a geographical I do know where he's coming from, from a communist nation. He was handpicked for that reason. He is a liberation theologist. He's identical to Reverend Jeremiah Wright. In almost everything he says, he could be Barack Obama's pope for that regard, in that regard. Everything he says is about liberation theology. He comes from a communist background. You know that. That's, you just said it yourself. What country does he come from? South America. Uh, no, no, he doesn't. That's not a country. That's a continent. What nation in South America did he come from? Uh, isn't Argentina correct? Correct. Uh, what is the history of Argentina when he was a young priest after he was a bouncer? Like the red and the black by Stendhal, he made a decision to get ahead in the world, and he knew there was only one way to get ahead, and that was through the church. So he became a, a lowly priest, and he's such a good politician, he became a bishop. He didn't become a bishop because God cho chose him. He's be because he's a good politician. So he polit a good politician, he became a bishop. But what did he use to get there? He agitated the poor his whole life. Just as he's trying to do on the world stage, but it's not playing right now amongst the educated Americans, for example, who know where he comes from, what the heck he's saying. What do you want me to do, kiss his robes because he, he says he's the Pope? He served the poor. I mean, he... His, he, he, sometimes it makes what he says makes us feel uncomfortable because we have to look at ourselves in the face. I no, it doesn't make me uncomfortable at all. I hate communists. I oppose communists. They they caused the hundred million deaths in the last century. Are you aware of that with this rhetoric? Are you aware what this rhetoric led to in the last century? A hundred million deaths. Do you know that? And and I don't think he's for he's. Um, that's not what he's uh, asking for, Mr. Savage. No, no, of course not. When Pol Pot, a little Marxist professor like Bernie Sanders, uh, left Cambodia to study Marxism, he went to Paris to study Marxism, and he came back and he instituted all the reforms that Bernie Sanders and the Pope are calling for. What it resulted was was the Khmer Rouge, which would be like, uh, let's say, the street thugs in, in uh, Baltimore, the street thugs in uh, uh, wherever that place is. I forget the other place where they burnt it to the ground. Where giving them a gun and a badge and tell them to go out and round up anybody with eyeglasses and call them the enemy of the state and they put them into uh, internment camps, work camps, and it wound up with a mountain of skulls, if you remember. It didn't start with uh, the communist professor Pol Pot wanting to kill millions of people, but that's where this rhetoric leads. Don't you understand that? I, I mean, I will agree to disagree. I don't think that's where it leads. Well, what do you mean disagree? Either you understand history or you know nothing and you're, igno and you're an ignoramus. Either you understand where communism leads or you're, you're an ignoramus. What do you want me to say? 
Can you show me what communism has worked? What would you use as an example? Cuba? 